The majority of pop songs stay in the same time signature for the whole duration of the tune, and often that time signature is 4-4. But today I want to show you some songs that subvert that expectation by throwing in random bars of 3-4. Adding in random bars of 3-4 into a song that's in 4-4 basically has the effect of sounding like we've missed out a beat because we were expecting to have 4 beats in the bar and suddenly we've only got 3. So this creates a fantastic but very unique effect where we're skipping into the next bar one beat early. And the first song I want to show you that does this is Heart of Glass by Blondie. The majority of Heart of Glass by Blondie is in 4-4. However, when we reach this bridge, we get a subtle change. We suddenly get a one-off bar of 3-4 at the end of each phrase. This jolts the song forward and helps add something interesting and ear-catching to this instrumental bridge. And like all the examples I'm going to show you today, it's not like we're actually moving to 3-4 here, it's more like we've just skipped a beat off the end of the 4-4, creating a skip in the music. We don't hear the 3-4 come in here where it's written on the sheet music, because we're still, as far as we're aware, in 4-4. It's only when the bar ends one beat early here that we suddenly realise that something's happened. In the second half of the bridge, we now get the fully fledged version of the same melody. No missing beat, just simple 4-4 four, four throughout. Because we've just had this same melody but with a missing beat at the end of each phrase, now when we get it with a fully fledged bar of 4-4 at the end, it sounds so much more logical and satisfying, it sounds like we've resolved the tension that we had before. Another example of this effect is I Love Rock and Roll. Just like Blondie, I Love Rock and Roll is also largely in 4-4, although we do get some occasional bars of 2-4 like here. <laughs> But the interesting bit that I want to talk about is the sudden change to 3-4 that we get here. Now this example of a missing beat, at least to me, doesn't feel particularly noticeable, it doesn't feel very jarring. It actually ties in quite nicely with the cadence of the chorus. When we get this hook again later, at first we've actually lost that bar of 3-4 and the whole thing is in 4-4. And this sets up our expectations because immediately after this we go into the original version which did have the missing beat. So we get a version with no missing beat, immediately followed by a version with a missing beat, so it sets up the contrast really clearly. This missing beat, this 3-4 trick, definitely adds a certain type of tension to the music. We want that final beat to resolve, but we're not getting it. At the end of I Love Rock and Roll, we do actually resolve this rhythm, because the very final time that we get this hook, we get the 4-4 version, which resolves it quickly with that final beat. All You Need Is Love by The Beatles uses the same technique as well, but it uses it so much more thoroughly than the other two examples. In my first two examples, this 3-4 trick was used quite sparingly, only in certain moments of the song. But in All You Need Is Love, it's used as the foundation of the verse section. The verse is constantly jumping back and forth from 4-4 four four to 3-4. So 
So as I said, unlike our other examples, this combination of 4-4 four, four, and 3-4 four is happening so regularly in this song that maybe it would be best to write it down as 7-4 with the occasional bar of 4-4. Four, four. It could certainly make the page look less messy if we did it this way, although seeing 7-4 written down at the beginning of the song might give the performer the wrong idea about how to conceptualise the rhythm of the song. But to try and show you what this 4-4-3-4 four, four, four combo is doing for All You Need Is Love, Here's an example of what it would sound like if it was just in 4-4. Four, four. One thing that happens in this song when you replace the bars of 3-4 with 4-4 four, four is that these pauses in the vocal line become one beat longer. And yeah, that doesn't really matter that much but it just stops the melody from being pushed forward as much. These skipped beats are causing the song to be pushed forward. They create a forward momentum because we keep tripping forward into the next bar. Now, one songwriter that I've wanted to talk about on this channel for a very long time is Burt Bacharach. And the song I'm going to talk about today is I Say A Little Prayer. Like my other examples, I Say A Little Prayer is predominantly in 4-4. However, the verse features this regular shift to 2-4. The moment I wake up A bit like I Love Rock and Roll, this song actually uses three different time signatures, 4-4, four, 2-4 four, four, and 3-4. Four. The 3-4 three, bar of I Say A Little Prayer comes along in the chorus. Each line of the chorus goes 4-4, four, 3-4, four, 4-4 four, 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 before we then repeat that same line again. So this is almost doubling down on this skipper beat trick because we're getting our bar of 3-4 that breaks the flow of 4-4, four, four, skipping the beat and pushing us forward in the rhythm. But also the phrase is only three bars long. Usually in most songs we'd have a four bar phrase before it repeats, but here we repeat after only three bars. All of the examples I've talked about so far have used this trick multiple times during the song, but the last example I want to talk about saves it for one pinnacle moment in the tune. For the final chorus of Bon Jovi's classic Living on a Prayer, we get a key change, a very famous key change. And this, as I've mentioned before, is a fairly standard trick, key changing up for your last chorus. But what Bon Jovi do to make this even more exciting, to maximise the impact of this key change, is they skip a beat as we key change. So they're not just dropping us into a new key without any warning, they're dropping us into a new key without any warning one beat earlier than we thought the bar was even going to end. So there you go, there are five different songs that use what I call the 3-4 trick. And thank you again so much to all of the patrons that make these videos possible. To those on the screen right now, and a special thanks to Andres Sainz Diaja, Andrew Brown, Bob McKinstry, Chris Lawrence, Daryl, David Defunderfer, David Eford, David Spaulding, George Taylor, Nancy Gillard, Peter Dumphy, and Roger Yun. Every day I'm listening to your drumming and I grew yeah. up listening to it. And I'm always hearing this, these sequences, which you were just doing. I don't, I'm sure you sure. weren't even working it out beforehand. You just did it and now it's immortalized. Uh, yeah, I never worked it out. So I, I could never work a fill out. It comes in the emotion of the song.